What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor, hit this little subscribe button over here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now we are on chapter two in the SSI Diver Stress and Rescue Program. We hope this video series is going to help you pass your final exam. However, we do want to put a disclaimer out here. Please seek out your local SSI Diver Stress and Rescue instructor so that you can get the proper knowledge, skills, equipment, experience before you go out and try to do any type of rescue techniques. So with that being said, let's jump into chapter two. So the first part of chapter two that we're going to look at is the psychological causes of stress. And a lot of times this is caused by poor judgment on, say, the diver's part, whether they've been drinking alcohol or they're just not in the right mind to go diving that day. And this can cause a lot of troubles underwater. It can make us paranoid while we're underwater. I know a lot of times here in our lake, people will say, Brian, how do you dive the lake with all the sharks that are in the water? And I have to remind them there's no sharks in our local lake. So it's those things like that that we need to be able to overcome. It's We don't want our mind to go wild. If we think of the Diver Diamond from SSI, the very per first part of that is knowledge. What knowledge does is it replaces fears and fantasies and gives us correct information to be safe while underwater. So the first type of stress we want to overcome, of course, is psychological stress. The next type of stress that we come across is equipment related stress. Now I know a lot of times divers don't want to pay to get their gear serviced or they don't want to upgrade to newer gear and they really get attached to their gear but yet they neglect it and a lot of times this can cause equipment malfunctions while underwater or if they see a little bubble they think ah oh, it's a little bubble no trouble and that's the furthest from the truth. We need to make sure that we're always taking good care of our equipment. If we take good care of our equipment our equipment will take good care of us as well. We also want to make sure that we're using in our logbook. If we lose something during a dive, we need to log that during our logbook so that we can be reminded to go pick up whatever that piece of gear is. That way we're always going to be properly equipped for the dives that we're making and we can actually eliminate all different types of equipment related stress. Now the next type of stress that we're going to look at is environmental stress, such as maybe the water's too cold, maybe it's a little bit darker than what we're used to, maybe we're dealing with some extremely high currents or even waves if we're diving, say, off a rocky beach area. Now there's a lot of different training that you can go out to help eliminate that stress by getting proper knowledge, skills, equipment, and experience in those areas under the direct tutelage of your local SSI instructor. The more that we know, the more educated we get as a diver, the safer we can be and the more environmental stress that we can actually eliminate as a diver. So guys, the last part of stress that we're going to look at is the overlearning of skills. And this is something that we should actually strive for. I know a lot of divers will go out and get their open water certification and that's the last class they ever take. Unfortunately, even if that is the last class, they never practice those skills. They just simply go diving. And to be honest, every dive you make, you should be taking your mask on and off. You should do a regulator switch. You should be constantly monitoring your gas. And that's going to help you, of course, build up a set of skills that is second nature to you so that you never have to think about, hey, what skills should I perform in this situation? By overlearning skills, we are just increasing our skill set more and more to where it does become second nature to us. And that way, no matter what situation pops up, we can act accordingly. All right, guys, that's going to do it for Chapter 2 of the Diver Stress and Rescue Program from SSI. Like I said, please seek out proper training from your local SSI Diver Stress and Rescue instructor before you go out in the open water and practice any of the skill sets from this program. However, we do hope our video series here is going to help you pass your final exam when you take it. Now, stay tuned for Chapter 3 because we're going to be taking a look at dealing with stress before a dive, during a dive, and, of course, after a dive, and how you can overcome it, whether it's you or your buddy that's in a stressful situation. You guys, I really hope you enjoyed Chapter 2 here. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. Definitely share it. If you got any questions, drop me a comment down below, and I'll try to answer it the best I can. I'm going to go ahead and sign off for today. Take care. God bless, and I'll see you in the next video.